Kevin Kiermaier, one of my favorites, one of my favorite center fielders ever. Thank you. Love watching you play. Uh, something we were just talking about, just the way you take nothing for granted. I uh, saw you make a play yesterday in February. Uh, you got coming in on a ball. There's a guy going from trying to go first to third on you. Yeah. Most most center fielders are going to say, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll toss it and I'll give guy third base. You threw the guy out at third, yeah. coming off the off balance, so making some crazy play. What what about uh, just the way you play? Like, how, how do you go? Why why do you do things like that? Well, like I just told you, I don't care if it's February or June or October or November. I know one speed, and I'm too competitive to allow someone to take the extra base on me. And when guys do, I would like to think I didn't have a, a play at it. Um, so for me, anytime I'm able to make a you know diving catch or you know cut a runner down a base, that's that's my bread and butter. That's what is ex expected out of me each and every day. And I've developed a repu defensive reputation for myself over the years, and I'm trying to keep that elite level for as long as possible. So, like I said, it don't matter if it's February, mid-season, post-season. I know one speed, but it you know doing this stuff in spring training, it makes it a much easier transition during the season because I'm not changing anything. So anytime you have the chance to make a play, whatever time of the year it is, you want to go out there and do it. Because yeah. like I said, the way you practice and train for all these, uh, it just makes it easier as time goes on because uh, you know we're just creatures of habit. So for me, I want to create the best habits possible. And it all starts with my work ethic, never going through the motions with anything. But that's why I'm able to make some plays that I feel like a lot of other outfielders don't because it's a mindset for one and just effort level overall. Uh, all those things add up. So that, that's, uh, that's my MO. Yeah, in season, how do, you, how do you stay sharp in the outfield? Like, what do you do, um, you know, pregame? Like, how do, you, how do you make sure you're getting the best jump, taking the best route, and that kind of thing? Batting practice. Batting practice is the main... The main fundamental you can do a ton of different stuff each and every day and the beautiful thing about you know the big leagues is that um, you know you're on your own program for a lot of things that you do we know what we need to do to get we all have a different routine getting stretched and how we get our body ready but for me batting practice is where I get all my work in I can work on you know, wait for those low line drives. I can work on ground balls, setting my feet, simulating like I'm throwing a guy out at home. I can, you know, scoot in and wait for that ball that's hit over my head, and I can run a few down, catch it Willie May style, two or three times a day, and everything's different. You just, uh, you try to prepare yourself out there in batting practice for any possible situation once the game time comes. So, for me, I'm creative out there. I, I want to be prepared for any possible play. So batting practice for all you kids out there, you won't you won't get any better work than what you can in batting practice because that's going to be the most realistic live read off a of bat when it comes to game time. So that's my uh, yeah. point to kids out there: batting practice, shagging matters, especially for outfielders. Definitely. You know, we can sit here and have the fungos hit to us off a machine, but there's nothing that simulates that ball off the bat like batting practice compared you know game batting practice pretty much same thing just the game matters a lot more in batting practice obviously but that is how I prepare myself but yeah. uh, just what I want to work on that particular day is what I'll do and you have to listen you know if my legs are feeling not so great then I might have a very light day but I know once seven o'clock hits and that game come you know game time I'm ready for whatever but you have to listen to your have to listen to your body for sure but preparation is key, so you just try to stay prepared each and every day as much as you can. I'm going to get a little nuance for you, with you uh, on the outfield side of things since we've talked about gear before. Um, do you guys get signs from the, like, can you, do you know as a center fielder what sign, what, what, what pitch is coming so that you can maybe adjust? Because you guys do more positioning the Rays yeah. than probably anybody else in the league. Yeah, for me, I mean, the positioning is huge. We all have cards where we want to play and whatnot. For me, I, I have a very, very good eyesight where I can, depending on what pitcher I know what you know our pitchers are throwing, 
and I can I can get a feel for you know the pitcher signs from center field location wise I use all that in the play with where I think the ball is going to be hit depending on me having confidence in a certain pitcher or saying okay looks like they're setting up heater away to a right-handed batter I'm going to be ready for a ball hit in the right center gap if one is going to be hit to me yeah and you use those instincts and you know things happen complete opposite of what I'm thinking sometimes you just yeah. try to adjust on the fly yeah but more times than not I feel like I have a pretty good idea where the ball what direction will be hit and I also you know have to uh, give credit to the coaching staff and the people upstairs who are putting us in the general area for positioning but you can uh, you can't go against your instincts and no matter what that card says I'm gonna listen to my instincts over everything I'm gonna make sure the guys on each side of me we're all on the same page with uh, spacing amongst each other and all that so we just try to uh, you know have a no-fly zone out there in the outfield and uh, so yeah it all it all it all comes full circle with every there's a lot more into it that goes into it than I think what people realize but I think uh, you know for me I just take so much pride on in my game overall but like I said defense is my bread and butter and um, you know that's just that's who I've been my whole life and that's what got me to the big leagues and um, you know I just I enjoy having the reputation I do but there's a lot of work behind closed doors that come along with yeah. it I noticed that uh, you guys had four outfielders yesterday yeah now, if I was a center fielder and I had a guy come that close to me, I'd be like, ah, you know, what do, what's hey, your it's feeling? 2000, on that? It's 2019, <laughs> man. The game, the game is changing, but I will say it's all for us trying to be more successful. So, like yesterday, yeah. you know, Chris Davis when he came up, we wanted to put four outfielders out there. Uh, he's a guy who likes lift, lifting the ball, and we want to try to take away that. We'll give him the whole left side of the infield if he lays down a bunt. Or hits a single the other way we'll just tip our hat hey nice job but we're trying to limit his uh his bread and butter which is power as much as possible hitting the gaps or you know he can hit over the fence and i'm just talking about him in particular talking about yesterday yeah yeah but there, we do we do a lot of funky things but like i said i always finish with it is trying to help the team at the end of the day and we're not afraid to be unorthodox yeah that's and, uh, a we've had success doing it so it might be the norm in five or six years from now. Who knows? But you I are think, a trend-setting team. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, and, and you 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 have to take those chances because you're the Tampa Bay Rays yeah. and you're you're True. competing against these giants. Mm -hmm. You have to take chances, and and they've paid off a few times, and it's it's kind of tracked through the league a little bit. Yeah, you just you you know it's it's our job as players to be. Um, on board with everything that that's going on you know with the openers defensive positioning what i just said it might be the norm here before not too long we'll see i mean it just it depends on uh what your team is and what your philosophy all that but um me this is all i know the race is all i know we've had success doing you know last year more than any year ever where uh We've had success doing things unorthodox. You know, we put Sergio Romer, a close, you know, guy who's been a part of three World Series teams. We put him in third base. You know, he started out the inning and he went to third base because a lefty came up, and we trusted that lefty, you know, wasn't going to make us pay for that, which he did. And then Sergio came in for the next righty. Since he didn't leave the game technically, he could go back and pitch, and he closed the game out. So we do things like that, and there might be a lot of people who don't agree with it. But at the end of the day, we're all high-fiving each other after yeah. the games, after a win. And it's the big leagues. That's all we want to do is win. So you just have to be on board with what they're doing. Trust them. Uh, you know, for, for Kevin Cash in the front office, they're going to look like geniuses when stuff like that works out. But then when it doesn't work out, people like pointing the finger. And it's not about that. It's about riding the wave as much as you can. And every philosophy we have on any facet of the game it's all to try to win. So we're on board with it. Got, you know, it's, like I said, becoming a lot more normal in the game now with a lot of different analytical stuff, technology, where, uh, like I said, the game is changing every year. That's just the way it is. So you just have to be open to it. <laughs> At the end of the day, winning is all that matters. So yeah. whatever. So um, I know that last we spoke, you were uh, wearing New Balance cleats. You switched over to Nike. 
why and uh, how do you like how do you like Nike so far? You know what, uh, New Balance treated me great. They did. It was just one of those things where I had them for four or five years, and I just wanted to test the waters. Uh, you know, once my contract was up, and you know, kind of going back and forth with different companies as far as uh, you know what what kind of contract we could we could do years yep. wise, and you know what what came along with it. And it, it got to the point where I, I chose Nike. Uh, it's, it's hard to go against them. You know, they have the reputation they do. I know my wife is really happy. I know that she was, she was chirping in my ear the whole time. But at the end of the day, you know, I tested out many different cleats, turfs, batting gloves from different companies. And I went with Nike. I'm very happy. This is my second year with them now. I'm very happy with how everything has gone. Uh, what have you what got just, right now? What's that? What have you got? Uh, so I, I do, uh, I wear the Trouts and the Hirachi. So these, um, actually what's funny about these, <clears throat> so when they send stuff to athletes, you know, pro athletes, um, these particular cleats are actually not available. These are the retail trouts. So these you can find at sporting goods stores. Uh -huh. I just think they're a little bit lighter than the, the trouts that they send us. It's just a different really? bottom, that's it. I just think they feel a tick lighter. And for me, weight and comfortability is the main thing that I care yeah. about. I don't wanna feel like I have bricks on my, on my feet. So these feel really good. These are what I wore all last year. Those are the uh, Trout Fours. Those are, yes. And then these, the Hirachis, um, I just tried these on. I didn't, I came, like the other day, I didn't even know what kind these were. Alpha my teammates, Hirachi yes. Elite my, yes. I just, my teammates were just saying how comfortable they were. I put them on, big fan. So you will see me yeah. rocking these all year. Um, I just like the, you know, I, I don't like true high tops, but if, you know, if you look at these, I, I would call these mids because they're actually right here. And this is just, you know the uh, the the strap, but it also gives you just a little bit more support. Like I said, I don't like traditional high tops. I feel like my foot just isn't able to move. But they nailed it with both these straps to just give me that extra support. But also, yeah. it's not too thick or too stiff where I feel like I'm uncomfortable. Big fan of these. Um, and then I do the uh, I do the Paul Georges for my turfs. Mm -hmm. So. I wore, I wore these for the first time this off season, you know, got them customized a little bit. Um, but big fan of these, and that's what I pretty much wear each and every day, and I'm comfortable with what I wear. Huge fan, huge fan, but... Um, now, uh, this, this we already know about, but I, I just want to see that gamer, just because, is this the gamer? I believe this will be my gamer. This was my batting practice glove last year, so every year, you know, my contract with Rawlings, I get four gloves a year. I usually pick two. I, you know, you can kind of, depending on each glove, you, they're not all the same. You know, I get the same model, but every, all the leather, it's, it's different in a way. That yeah. makes, you know, no, no, no glove is the same. Yeah. Even if it says they're the same. So for me, I can kind of feel like, okay, these two out of these four, and I'll mess around with the other two that I put away. Right. But there's two that I break in every spring. And out of the two that I pick for the season, the one I like the best, I'll make that one my gamer, and then the other one for batting practice. And I know there's some guys who wear the same gloves for years and years. I do one glove each year. So this one, like I said, was my batting practice glove last year, and it's right where I want it. So this, I think, is yeah. gonna be my gamer this year. And I'll still break in a couple other gloves that I just uh, had sent to me right when I showed up for spring training. But I love Rawlings, you know, got my platinum label on here. I do the, the Pro 303 model, H-Web, uh, and you know, I just like a, a pretty basic format. Um, I don't like to That's a be loud out there, you know, That's with standard, crazy yeah. colors. Yeah. You know, there's some gloves you can get a little crazy with, but for my gamer, you know, I just want to put it on and, and feel comfortable. And uh, you come in for Jackie Bradley this year? Yeah, you know, I, uh, <laughs> man, he's a good player. I gotta stay. I gotta stay on the field. Jackie, one of my my favorite center fielders to watch. Shout out to you, Jackie. You're very very well deserved. But I am I am coming for you. 
So the, the, the one time in my career where I really, I think, uh, I'm not going to say doubted myself, but really questioned, questioned my, my ability, my ability, um, was 2011, my low A year. I just, you know, I've been a guy where I've, you know, I, I, uh, I was a pretty good player, and I know I'm, I'm busting out the yearbook right now. Really gifted Little League player. Once I got to high school, I was always very small. Everyone caught up to me, overpassed me, by, and I was a very average player, freshman through junior year, and then senior year, I grew a little bit. And I realized that, okay, you know, being honest, I'm not the best student out there. I need to take more pride in my schoolwork my senior year because I want to go play college because I need a, I would love I need a scholarship to help my family out financially and it got to the point where I had a lot of success my senior year um, you know and I'm going to my junior college but I've created a mindset throughout the way where it's like you know when I got to JUCO I wanted to get a scholarship to Purdue that's all I wanted and I was going to work my butt off to get it I got it I was committed to go there after my sophomore year and then Pro scouts started seeing me my sophomore year, and then it got to the point where, okay, I love Purdue. I will always love that university so much. I'm a huge fan. Mm -hmm. If pro baseball is in the works for me, I'm going to go work my butt off for that, and I made that happen. So I've created this mindset and had a good rookie year, 2010. Now, going to the 2011 where I struggled, it was the first time in my life where I ever really, really struggled so bad. And like I said, really question myself, am I good enough to play? I can play defense in the big leagues right now. I can go run the bases, do all that with anyone. Yep. But you have to hit. You have to hit. So for me, it was, uh, it was a very dark year that year, just trying new stances and everything. And I just got in my head so much. It was a great, as much as it was terrible at the time, it was a great learning experience. Um, you know, fast forward a couple years, and then it got to the point where I said, you know what, I tried making two coaches happy a little too much, and I wasn't doing mm. what felt comfortable to me. Yeah. And I said, I, I talked to myself. I went to Australia that off season, 2011, played out there. And I looked at myself in the mirror, I said, if I fail playing this game, it's gonna be my way. I just went through the worst baseball season of my life, doing it other people's way, and I'm not gonna fail doing someone else's way. If I'm not good enough to play, I can, I'll find something else to do. I can live with myself. With that being said though, I've never had a plan B in my life. I've thrown my eggs into the pro baseball basket starting once those scouts saw me in junior college. And even after my doubts, I questioned myself, was I good enough? And I was not going to let a little bit of failure define who I was as a player. So I truly have gotten better year after year, you know, developed more offensively. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where only the strong survive in this game. You have to be strong up here. And this is a game of failure. So if you can't accept that, you're not going to make it in this game. And for me, I've had so many great learning experiences throughout my career that have got me to this point today. And uh, it makes any time you have success out on the field a great thing because it, this game is so hard, man. Trying to go out there and hit these guys throwing 100 with sink and all that. But for me, um, I've never had a plan B. I'm not gonna let anyone take away this opportunity from me. I'm gonna outwork everyone, I promise you that. And that's the beautiful thing about baseball. I don't care if you're me, Jose Altuve, Altuve, Mookie Betts, Mike Trout, everyone is working their butts off each and every day. And that's why there's so much competition in the baseball world. We're all our own different individual, obviously. We all have a different skill set. But for me, uh, maybe, you know, not a guy being the most talented out in the field, something I control is my effort each and every day and my work ethic to wanting to be better and doing the little things to make me better. That's where I feel like I'm different than most people out there and there might be people better at me, but uh, I just, I care so much and I have the best opportunity ever in my life to play this game for a living and I'm gonna play the way I do for as long as I can until someone tears this jersey off my back and I know at the when I, re when I retire that one day from being a player, I want to look back on my career saying I truly gave it everything I had 
And even if you know I'm, I'm walking with a limp or a bad back when I'm 50, it's all worth it because you get that reputation. You know, you go, people see you in public. Hey, I love the way you play the game. Shake your hand. Go. You know, little things like that are the greatest compliment I could ever receive. So, start rambling there a little bit, but it's just a quick yeah. background from my life in the baseball world in a nutshell. Yeah. The mental mindset that I've gained over the years has, has me sitting here today, but I'm not content with anything I'm doing. Uh, I can always be better, we all can, in every facet of life, and that's what drives me each and every day. Uh, I love what I do, and I'm thankful for it each and every day.